everybody. We're David and Nikki Nellis. Welcome to Foodie and the Beast. We have such a good show for you today. We have RJ Cooper in studio. He's going to tell you all about his new restaurant, Rogue 24, that's opening soon. And Pound the Hill Coffee is in. They're making lots of delicious coffee drinks. And Nick Wiseman and Seth Teicher are here to talk about Eat Local First Week. And we've got the folks from the Fancy Food Show in. There's lots of good products and lots of good taste. Just stay tuned. Planet Wine. It's like having your own wine cellar right in the heart of Del Rey. More than 700 bottles of domestic and imported wines offer something for every occasion and budget. For fine wines and more, there's a whole planet. Planet Wine in Del Rey. All right, and Pound the Hill is a great little restaurant up on where else? Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. Interesting name. Right? Thank you. It's hard uh, to you're come welcome. Up with. <laughs> um, and uh, we're in to talk uh, the one aspect in particular of what Pound the Hill does with Carl Johnson, who's the managing partner, and that's coffee. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to get some taste. You've got some specialty. We've got four different things to taste today. Too hot, too cold. Well, Yum. Why don't we just start Let's with you, just Carl? Dig in. Since with you me, managed I mean, to hard. butt in, we're just going to... Looking gonna start. at this gin in front of me, it's hard to serve uh, coffee Are right you going to pour some gin into the I'm going to do some gin mixed with some iced <laughs> coffee. We're going to invent a new drink today. Excellent. I love that. Um, but why don't we start with uh, you know trying some, some hot coffees. We brought two different um, types of coffee with us today, both mm -hmm. single origin coffees. Uh, everything we serve is organic, fair trade. Um, some people don't know or care about that if they live in the Starbucks generation, but uh, it does make a big difference in both the taste and the uh, livelihood of the of the farmers from where the coffee comes from. Well, you know, why don't you so, explain, if you can, just briefly, sure. what is organic coffee? I mean, it does it just mean no pesticides, just like regular organic vegetables? It pretty much means it's it's made the way that it's been made for thousands of years. Okay. It's grown the way it's been grown for thousands of years, and there aren't pesticides put in there. There aren't things put in there that are artificial, um, chemical-based that could either help it grow faster or ensure you have less waste in the crop. Mm -hmm. um, ensure you have less uh, insects and things like that. Basically, the, the farmers around the world that grow these coffees don't have the money for pesticides anyway, so they're growing it the way it should be grown. Um, what we're doing is working through uh, fair trade with these. So it's our coffees come through what's called uncertified fair trade. Okay. It means it's actually a fair trade. Our roaster buys directly from the farmers or the farmers' co-ops, but they don't certify it as fair trade, which adds on so much extra unnecessary margin to right, the like coffee costs, right. that it's then more of kind of a fake certification, semi-fake certification that ends up adding to the cost. Well, that happens so, at a lot of farmer's markets, too. Absolutely. People are growing organic vegetables, but to get the certification costs so much money for these small yeah. farmers, it's just not worth it. When you go to the farmer's market, it's organic, but it's not going to have a USDA organic right. sticker. How important is it? Okay. Absolutely. So um, what are you pouring for us first, please? So we've got two things today. We've got our organic Sumatra, which mm -hmm. everybody comes into the shop. They say, oh, I want a coffee by the pound. Uh, if they don't know what they like, which is the average consumer doesn't necessarily know the difference between a lot of different coffees, they always say, give me the darkest. They're kind of used to the Starbucks style of, of strong, heavily bitter. roasted, kind of dark. Um, I don't like to say bitter because I wouldn't like to say any of our coffees are bitter. They okay. really shouldn't be. But this is kind of our darkest roast. It's our organic Sumatra. So let me grab that. Great. Okay. Well, while you're pouring us our daily dose of caffeine. Let's... Why don't we turn to DC's top rogue, okay. R.J. Cooper. Or Rube. Or RJ. Rube or rogue. A rogue or rogue. Or maybe, or rouge. maybe it's rouge. <laughs> I just want to know something. You've been here before. Uh, and in studio. In studio, and I, I, I'm sure pretty much everybody knows your story, but for the two or three people out there that don't, give us a fast 411 on you. On me, oh boy! And children, cover your ears. And hurry, because no. we've got a lot of other questions. Right, to ask right, you. right. Uh, so quickly, you know, uh, cook, chef, uh, work for some great people around the world and the country. Uh, mentored by Jeff and Sally Boobin, and now uh, you know we broke. I broke off about a year and two weeks ago from Vidalia. But who's counting? <laughs> they they made it. The kids made it. You know, necessary for me to say that. Oh, yeah. And. Uh, now we started this restaurant called Rogue 24. Uh, just, you know, trying to get do, do the right thing. Well, let me ask you. So you, when you were at Vidalia, mm -hmm. towards the end there, you were doing some this kind of concept where there would just be like eight people, eight, right? Eight people, and you would do the 24 <laughs> dishes. Right. It depends on who would take the reservation. Okay. So it would be, it like eight 18, people or sometimes <laughs> 12. But, um, right. so did you just sort of take that concept and think, I can do this in a full-blown restaurant? Well, it can be, because if, if you see what the, the what's going on in Europe and around in, in small parts of this country right now, the, the idea of a craftsperson in showing their trade is really becoming very popular. Mm -hmm. So what we're, you know, basing our 
uh, fanatics on is how we're sourcing the product and how we're going to manipulate that pot- product and how you're going to uh, palately take that product, not to have palate fatigue. I have never heard him be this eloquent. Okay, no, this is, really? Isn't that good? It's pretty good. <laughs> you said. Delight. Did you practice this or is this just you? <laughs> not hung over on a Sunday side. morning. It's a whole other yeah. side of you, baby. Right. Um, well, let's start from the beginning then. Let's talk about Rogue 24, where it is. And I mean, this is a very different concept. There's only 54 seats. The 52 seats. 50, I'm so sorry. 52 seats. 24 24 course course menu. So how do you envision this working? Well, there's two menus. Uh, okay. th- during the week, Tuesday through Thursday, we're going to do a 16-course menu, which kind of breaks it down just a little bit. And these and are mini plates. They got to be right. They're, they're all they're all they're, they're all different sizes. It depends on the 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 the, the concept of the dish itself mm-hmm. and where it sits in your palate. And and what we want to do is is come up and we've sourced some of the best products that we could find and be able to have your palate just exposed to that. And we, which a lot of places you can't get that. And and so the idea idea is to walk of like I like to call it you know being a jam band guy let's go on a journey right so you're gonna start at the beginning of the trail and you're gonna go down the twists and down the paths and ups and downs and in your your palate's gonna sing it's all about the guest who can eat all that food I mean, you'd have to be job. Yeah, I can. What are you kidding? I know don't I can. Be <laughs> cruel. <laughs> All right, but no, so when? So, but wait, what? that's a valid question. Wait a minute. I it's mean, that's a, a lot question. of food. You've it's not a it. lot of food because it, you know it, what's interesting because I I've had a decision menu this large many many places. I'm a lot more full going to a big steakhouse and having a ribeye and all the sides. Than to have this this Middle. kind of degustation because your your body's going through this metamorphosis and and feeling what we're doing and you're not getting stuffed when you have a big piece of food in front of you all you're gonna do is just sit there and yeah. keep scarfing. This is over two three hours, right? It's just a it's three it's about a three hour dining yeah. experience. So it 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 works where, you know. The whole sensory is, is what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's just not, you know, a server bringing you a plate, dropping it off, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But we want people to feel what we're doing. All right. We have to take a quick break. But when we get back, we're going to ask harder questions like, when are you actually going to open? This is <laughs> David and Nikki Nellis. When are we going to cut all the theory and get down to the reality? <laughs> and the publicist jumps up. No, don't do it. Don't tell them. This is Foodie and the Beast. We'll be back in just a sec. The phrase neighborhood restaurant means convenience, but not necessarily style or good taste. But in D.C.'s West End, Circle Bistro, Noti Bianche, and Dish Plus Drinks take neighborhood dining to new levels. Circle Bistro offers contemporary French-inspired cuisine. Dish has new twists on American classics. And Noti Bianche is the perfect Italian trattoria. The Kennedy Center is just steps away, so pre- and post-theater dining is enjoyable and convenient. Dish, Noti Bianche, and Circle Bistro. There's good taste in the neighborhood. And we're back on Foodie and the Beast, and we've got R.J. Cooper, the chef owner of Soon to Open Rogue Twenty Four, here. And he was we had a very intimate conversation during the break, where he told me, along with telling me how much he admires me and <laughs> likes, <laughs> likes my my tan all over, uh, that his restaurant is actually going to open. It's oh, I'm really way darker. Out of your clothes. I'm way darker. Please <laughs> don't even bother. That's no, that's because you have all those tats. Yeah, those don't count yeah. as a tan. Yeah, it's it's my arm isn't. Excuse it's me. My arm is not blue. Ooh, it's brown, <laughs> but um, um, the, the the word is you're going to open sometime in, the, in mid-July. Is that accurate? We're, that's what we're pushing for. The uh, the construction's close. All right. Well, well let's do this. Let's make sure we do it because you will be open in a cut. It's really just two weeks thereabouts. Tell everybody. 922 N Street, but where exactly that is, Explain and it. the URL, the whole works. Right, well, 922 N Street is actually a townhouse on N Street. So before that townhouse, there's Blagden Alley. So mm-hmm. you would, if you're going down N Street to, in, towards 10th, so we're between 9th and 10th Street, and uh, you make a right into the alley mm-hmm. or left, depending on is which way you're going. Is there parking, or how do you do that? Well, there, we we do. We're going to have this fine couple gentlemen standing at the door, opening your doors, and saying, "Thank you. May I take your car to the lot?" So we do have valet because Excellent. it's the only way we could we could really. You can't park in the alley. It's right. "May I take your car to the lot that I like." If it's just "May I take your car," so, you know, you <laughs> well, it depends on the car. <laughs> you know, I, I like I, I like to go for a ride. Um, <laughs> so it's it's between M and N, Ninth and Tenth Street, and Blagden Alley. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
it's you, you can, you'll be able to see the sign. I mean, it's a big iron. All right, and the sign. web address is uh, www.rogue24.com. Excellent. All right. He's like, yes. Twitter, right. Twitter, Hello. Chef RJ. I think. No, 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 no. Will you, will you be? Too. Will you be on open table or no? We are going to be on open table. Okay. All right. Totally in, got it. In, in, I'm going to throw you out of here now. Right. I love you. We got to more coffee. Where you go get more coffee, more gin. You can stick around. All right. Well, well, we're going to bring up uh, Ron and Sarah now. Ron Tanner is with the National Association for the Specialty Food Trades Summer Fancy Food Show, and he's brought in Sarah Cohen from what can only be described as the yummy Route 11 potato chips. Yum! And I found out Sarah's family chips. also owns a Tabard Inn where, in my youth, I'd been too <laughs> discombobulated to actually go home, so I spent a couple of nights there. It's a nice place. I like it. Is Thank there you. more to that story? <laughs> there is. There is, but but now we're married, and, and you know, we don't want to tell that story. Okay. So, I've already heard it. Do you really want to hear it? What? So You were it. <laughs> Anyways. I'm at the Tavern Inn. Yeah, well, you don't remember anything. Okay. Um, so, my first experience with the Fancy Food Festival was years ago. My parents actually had a barbecue sauce that they brought to the Fancy Food Show. Now, her father's a doctor, and the sauce was red. We're not sure if it was no, my mother made it. Was it blood-based? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that was one of the most incredible experiences. It was at the Javits Center in New York okay, City, yeah. and it was just row after row after row after. I, it was just an infinite, um, an infinite amount of foods: smoked salmon,s chocolates, sugars, salts. It was the most unbelievable experience. And now, Ron, you guys are bringing the Fancy Food Festival here. Yeah, GDC. it's coming to D.C., and it's going to be here on July 10th to the 12th, and mm -hmm. we're going to have around 2,300 companies that are well. going to be there. Okay. So you can spend days and days and days walking around and tasting everything that's going to be there. Well, let's just step back for those who aren't familiar with it, because it's not something that's open to the public, but what is the Fancy Food Show? What is it for? Well, it's really the opportunity for people that make specialty foods, and specialty foods has a broad definition. It, okay. it's, it's specialty, it's ethnic, it's natural, it's gourmet, um, it's regional foods. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for these companies to really show their products, and then for the buyers to come and buy the products. Because all these companies are so small, mm -hmm. you know, they're not like a Kraft or a Heinz where they can actually go out on the road and show things to people. You know, they have to have the buyers come to them. So, so this is like bringing everybody into one place. It's bringing everybody into one place. Correct. So so the, 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 the man on the street is not able to come to the show. What? So the man on the street is not able to come to the show unless the man on the street works in the food business. Mm -hmm. It makes yeah. sense. I mean, this is the man on the street, I assume, really what we get is the the benefits afterwards after the products are bought by the Well, yeah, it's a business-to-business to business show. So, right. so the, what's there is the people are selling their products, and then they will find retailers primarily, but about a third of the companies there are from Do restaurants. Do people try to bust the door? There are a lot of people that try to get into to the get show crashers? that are not I in the food that. business. I, yes. well, I just want to say, Ron, I've always liked you and <laughs> admired you for... I already have a badge for you, David. Oh, there you go. Matter of fact, I think I have a couple, get your own a couple food badges shows, for you. Suckers. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. All right, well, Sarah, let's get to you, please. Okay, so see. tell us a little bit about Root 11 potato chips. Well, Root 11, if you've never had a, one of our chips, is the local potato chip for the D.C. region. Mm -hmm. We're located out in the Shenandoah Valley. All of our chips are hand-cooked, and um, we've been going to the Fancy Food Show now for 20 years. This will be my almost my 20th show. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's a lot more convenient now geographically, isn't That's it? That's right. No, yeah. we're excited because it's right in our backyard, which is awesome. Well, let me ask you a question, though. Since... You've got, what were the benefits for you of going to the Fancy Food Show, and why do you continue to go back? Well, when, we start, when I started the company back in 92, mm -hmm. we had absolutely no customers. I mean, we were at the mercy of people walking in the front door of our factory and just buying chips over the counter. Okay. Okay, so we went from that. The first show we went to, I had one, one product, which was our lightly salted. Here, let's okay. hold these bad boys up. You want to help me? Yeah. That's my and favorite, so, by the way. oh, I thank you, that. the Mama Zumas. Oh my God, I love them. Get the um, sweet potatoes. Yeah, and the chips that I brought today all have a sort of a significant story. Um, the dill pickle is actually nominated for an award this year mm -hmm. at the Fancy Food Show for outstanding snack food. You know these bags just weep to be opened I, up. I, <laughs> <laughs> now you got so the Mama Zumas are hot. We you know we no, use habanero um, peppers, and they've got a nice delay. But, um, he, he took two of them. There. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know he's yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. Can I, but hello? but the show. I think going to the show Share is just this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my friend, you're my wife. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, smells so good. Yeah, so, ahead, so, so, yeah, so going to the show over the years is just kind of this continuum of developing mm -hmm. relationships in the in the business. You meet retailers from all over you the country. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, and it's really where I've built the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the one trade show I do, actually. I don't really? have a sales staff. Um, and so this is where I go and do my selling in three so days. So where are but, wait, wait, available wait, wait. now? Are they available nationally? Yeah, actually, you can find them. I mean, we're not saturating the country. We want right. to saturate this area. Um, mm -hmm. But you can find us in specialty food stores and delis across the United States. Well, I want, radio is theater of the mind, as we yeah. have no, to say. So I want to give everybody in the audience this. Come yeah, let me get some of this deal. Nice. Got to get the chip off the microphone. Okay. <laughs> um, let's just talk quickly about some of these other products that you brought in, because you brought in such a wide range of things. Yeah, I just wanted to go through some of the trends that we have there. That'd be um, great. The pickles are huge. Okay. You know, everybody's pickling everything from mm -hmm. New York. We're having a seminar at the show on the Southern Relish Tray. Okay. So pickles are very big in, big in the South. We have some green tomato pickles here from Low Country Produce, Yum. which is in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Do you want to stick half, half of one of those in yeah, your mouth? Yeah, hello. Pass it over. Half of one? What well, are you talking about? Half of yeah, one? Yeah, hold on. Go for it. Boy, this guy, here's somebody who doesn't know me at all. Yeah. Yum. Mm, yummy. And then we have this ghost pepper. Ghost pepper is hotter than habanero peppers. It's the hottest pepper yeah, that I'll is made. That and we have yeah. companies that are making ghost pepper sauce, and we have a couple ghost pepper chocolates as well. Really? So it's kind of a new hot, mm. hot, hot I product. dare you. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I want to say she isn't sure. Oh, do you need a fork? I got a fork. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Oh, would you like the big spoon? <laughs> no. I've been living in that house alone pretty much. <laughs> okay. It comes later, oh, sure. I think. <laughs> Goodbye. I mean, it's hot. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to pretend that it's not. But it's very tasty. But it's oh, smoky, okay. too. I mean, it adds flavor. Am I turning red? <laughs> <laughs> no, you delicious. are growing. That's nice. And do you know when you have something really hot in your mouth, the best thing to make it go down with is the black truffle popcorn. Excellent. So that'll take that exactly out of there. <laughs> so have a taste of that. That's um, right. Popcorn is big this year. Lots is of popcorn it? at the show. Tons of it. Is popcorn big every year? No, it hasn't been until this year. It seems Why to be is it a, big this year? It seems to be a snack that people are are accustomed to. And a lot of the popcorn companies are making 100 calorie packs, so you can get black truffle popcorn and 100 calories, which yeah, people seem good. to like. All right, uh, Ron, unfortunately, we got to wrap up. Sarah, Sarah, thanks for joining us. Thanks These are delicious so potato Thank chips. You. Root 11 potato chips, everyone. Mm -hmm. And Ron Tanner, it's thanks local, very much. And we're going to be talking local in just a sec. So All right, and later segue. we'll find out how to break into the show. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Right. Well, you're Thank welcome you so to come. Right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> That's great. All right, well, All right. while Carl's doing that, we're going to bring in uh, Nick Wiseman of Roadside Food Projects and John Harris, head bartender from the Gibson, and Seth Teicher. I guess, Seth, you were also with Roadside? Yep. Okay, not with Ferrante anymore? Not anymore. <laughs> who remembers Ferrante and Tiger? I don't know what you're I am the only one about. who does. I think they're both dead now. Anyway. <laughs> but we're talking about the first ever Eat Local First Week that starts July 9th. Um, and the question right off the bat is, tell us about ro roadside projects and roadside food projects and why you're doing you this. Say. So we've partnered but, with uh, <clears throat> Think Local First, which is an organization here that's amplifying local businesses. Uh, and they're doing an Eat Local First Week, which is really a celebration of local food. Uh, empowering both restaurants and consumers to really celebrate and connect with food that's grown uh, locally. So yeah, we we really want to we want to work with them to add um, sort of another layer to to the week of events that they were doing, and we mm -hmm. thought um, we could really bring a fresh perspective to. Uh, to well, let's week. talk about the events. No, wait, we have John Harris here from the Gibson, and he has all these products <coughs> in front of him. So um, you're going to make us a drink, John. John. Hey, John. Hey, John. Hey. He's borrowing uh, ice from me. Okay. Nice. You can borrow ice. ice. Why don't ice. you just tell us quickly so you can get started on that cocktail? Did you tell him I only have ice for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently not. Okay. Thank, you. Um, Thank you. So today we've got some wine berries that Nick forged somewhere. Yeah, okay. we forged them right up here by the studio, actually. Just okay. a couple blocks okay. away. John's yeah. like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay, whatever. I got some uh, berries. There's like little tiny tart raspberries. Are, mm -hmm. which are really good. Did you get the worm out? Of the berry? We take it. Okay, one. good. Yeah. Just making sure. <laughs> the dangers of foraging. Uh, I'm Nikki right. Nellis, and I'm going to bring the show way down now. <laughs> there was a worm in my yeah, I hope you get the, the worm drink. <laughs> uh, and then, aside from that, we have wild mint. Mm -hmm. that I don't know where that came from, actually. Where did that come from? Also, just a few blocks away. Just a few Backyard blocks. garden. Apparently, it grows everywhere. So, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. with the wine berries and the mint, I'm going to make an old drink called, a uh, twist on an old drink called the Clover Club, which comes from the 1890s. It's uh, Hendrix Gin, lemon juice, raspberry syrup. I'm going to mix 
mash up some raspberries and sugar to make a little syrup, and then uh, there's lemon juice, the gin. We'll put an egg white in it, shake it up, and garnish it with the mint leaf. Terrible. Get started. All right, let's All right. take the break because I got a fast question for these guys when we get back. Okay, great. This is David and Nikki Nellis with Foodie and the Beast. We are totally going local, and we're going to be drinking some good cocktails from the Gibson. We'll be back in just a sec. Planet Wine in Del Rey is more than just 700 great wines. There's also a stellar selection of craft beers picked by Greg Engard, one of food and wine's favorite beer experts and artisan charcuterie from Red Apron. For fine wines, beers, and more, there's a whole planet. Planet Wine in Del Rey. And we're back on Foodie and the Beast with David and Nikki Nellis. We're talking foraging and eating local and all that, but Feist, I just want to quickly thank the people that make this show possible. I have to interrupt and say the mint smells so Good. Stop interrupting when sorry. I'm speaking, young lady. Okay, sorry. Uh, and I don't want anyone here who's not yet a sponsor of the show to feel bad about this. But <laughs> uh, I just want to thank the people at Georgetown Bagelry for great bagels, of yep. course, every morning. Neighborhood Restaurant Group, that's Planet Wine, Rustico, Evening Star, Tallulah, Columbia Firehouse, Birch and Barley, Church Key. Our friends, good friends, at Founding Farmers down on Pennsylvania Avenue, and our friends at Farmers and Fishers who are recovering from that flood down on the Georgetown waterfront and coming back strong in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people at Nota Bianchi, Dish, Circle Bistro, Charles Schwartz and Son Fine Jewelers, and the Bethesda Central Farm Market. Well, if you're not going to go foraging, you can certainly head to the Bethesda Central Farm Market. Certainly. Because they have such a tremendous right. market that's going on right now. You have two more hours, so get going. All right, so After guys, show. here's my question. You can Foraging in a city like Washington is one thing. Is there foraging in New York or, you know, or... Detroit or someplace like that. I mean, is it can it be done successfully? Definitely. I mean, Steve Brill is has lived in New York for a long time, and he leads trips in Prospect Park and Central Park and all throughout the region. So it's uh, it's definitely a uh, something that's done on a regular basis, and mm -hmm. it, it's it's a little clandestine, but I think it's very popular. I mean, he sells out his tours consistently. But is this what you guys do as roadside? No, roadside no. food bread. This is just one of our many projects. Is that okay. you crawling by the side <laughs> of the road? <laughs> So yeah, so this tell is. Tell us about you guys and what you do. Sure. Um, so roads. But we, you need to. You can. You we, can touch it. Put uh, it up. We, we founded Roadside Food Projects uh, last October, mm -hmm. um, working with the Hip Hop Caucus. We threw a local food block party at Bread for the City. We okay. were simultaneously raising awareness for climate change and food access in Washington. We worked with a lot of local chefs, um, Dan Juicy from Seventeen Eighty Nine, Maru Atara. Um, Nathan Anda from Neighborhood Restaurant Group. Yep. Um, and we threw, we had local hip hop, local food, and we made it free for the city and we attracted people from across the region. So it was really, really fun. And sort of from there, we, we sort of figured what we wanted to do, not just be like a event company, but how can we add meaning and dynamism to to sort of the, the food system. And so we've gone from consulting on projects to hopefully starting some of our own eventually. And okay, well, I just have to say that you guys are like, what, five? How old are you? <laughs> I mean, you oh, that's just, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just because no, no, you're an old bag. I am old, <laughs> no, I, I just think it's like, I'm just... No, we're just, just thinking think about so, our own kids. It's and so impressive that you guys have yeah. found this cause and you're really doing something with it. I think it's really, really exciting. And you're local boys. And yeah, local native boys Washingtonians. That's it's right. very, very good. All right, guys, where can people find out about these events happening other than the list you want it, com, which Absolutely. is listing all of them. So elocalfirstdc.com is the domain okay. name. You can find it through the Think Local First website. Mm -hmm. All the tickets are being sold on eventbrite.com. Okay, great. All right, we got two more seconds cuz are there other events like this that you know of going around uh, going on around the country or uh, foraging is in vogue right now. I mean, I think the a lot of the fine dining restaurants are starting to forage for products. Uh, so, you know, I think that's sort of trickled down. Uh, Steve Brewer actually just launched his own iPhone app called Wild Edibles. Cool. So it sort of can guide you independently through uh, your foraging yeah. expeditions. <laughs> All right, well, guys, thanks very much. Take care. Thanks Once more, us. where can anybody find out the information? It's on uh, the Eat Local First website, which is eatlocalfirstdc.com. Excellent. Uh, you can find us at roadsidefoodprojects.com. Okay, 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 and all this will be on the list, too. All the events are already posted up on the yep. list. All right, so we want to thank our guests, RJ Cooper, Carl Johnson from Pound the Hill, Nick Wiseman, John Harris, Ron Tanner uh, from the Fancy Food Show, Sarah Cohen. With a brutal Seth of potato chips. Teicher. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, and Sarah, the potato chips were awesome. This is a great show. Oh, RJ is still here. Hi, RJ. <laughs> that Hi, you know what's terrible? That guy's got nowhere else to go. <laughs> Let's go home to your children. Okay, the show is over. We are taking a break next week for July 4th. So Yay. we'll be playing a best of. But when we come back, we're going to have an incredible show. If you're going to the Rammies tonight, look for us because we'll be there. And we'll be in Cape Cod, so please rob our house. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody have a delicious week. <laughs>